So do we have any discussion on the 11th? Go ahead. Is this for like third reading or adoption of the permit? Or is it just to collect all the comments that we've received and send them to the province? Is that? Yeah, the province is looking for our... The, it, but the, the province has referred it to the town uh, for um, uh, public consultation and um, express items that uh, council has to respond on. And then whether or not the permit... Well, uh, then it goes back to the liquor and cannabis licensing branch and they decide to issue or not issue. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're here to vote on whether we approve it or not to, to move into that. that. Yeah. So is that the motion that uh, you put forward, Councillor Grant? Oh, I just moved the recommendations yeah. here just so we get this done. Okay. So do we have a motion then for approval or? Huh? Well, can we discuss it some more? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, well, there's a few things that I definitely heard from the public. So, of course, parking seemed to be one of them, I think. That facility, there's a lot of for four spots, and I think that's pretty generous for a small shop of that size, especially if we put like at the 15 minute or 20 minute sort of like, you know, like a 30 minute limit to the parking. I think that's reasonable. I think the, maybe the community is concerned about some parking concerns due to the tap house opening up, and I think we're going to live through those pains for a little bit. Um, so that's something to consider. Um, I know like the hours, I know that's maybe something that concerns me too because it is easy when you've had a couple of drinks to go to the cannabis shop and then indulge in other um, whatever. But maybe, you know, in my mind it's maybe the hours were a bit different and more in line with like the church street bakery. It would make me more comfortable to accepting um, this. I think it's great. <coughs> this is like a, you know, like a local resident that will be running the shop, so it's great having like that, you know, supporting that Comox um, business owners that way. And I think, as she mentioned, um, that she will, you know, pay their staff like higher than a living wage, or I guess comparable to a living wage for the community, which is pretty rare for a lot of small businesses, because it is a lot um, to ask. And I know there's like a push towards that, and it's really hard to achieve, especially when your bottom line is uh, not that great, I guess. So I don't know if there's any provisions we can make to um, maybe not set the hours in stone right away, maybe have a, a discussion on that or a second cons consultation or maybe have a provisional like start closing at 8 p.m. to see how things go. If we get lots of complaints, leave at 8 p.m. If things run smoothly, then we can consider keeping it open later. Um, I'm not sure like, what your guys' thoughts are. I think that's basically my Maybe, maybe we, we can get some guidance from the planner on that on how we would address that, Marvin, with the, the hours of operation. Would we go like with the soft opening of their of their requested hours, see how that works, and then bring them back? Or oh, You go ahead. Uh, yeah, the, um, I mean, at this point, they, they have the hours of operation in their application if council wishes in their recommendation on their IMD to change, to recommend those hours be different, if they have that ability to do so. Um, as to hours of operations in general with the business, um, if we have that authority, that would be under business licensing, and that's not my area of expertise. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is something that we would have to discuss. Do we have any other further questions? I was just thinking about the other the one that we've already approved, I believe it has the same hours as this one. Is that correct? Okay. And there is a hub or uh, beverage facility going in across, right across mm -hmm. in there as well, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just wanted to. Yeah. Like it's if they're open until ten, and, and like it's going to be just as easy for somebody coming out of that hub to mm -hmm. make that decision, then you know. Okay, I think I saw Messenger Grant. Well, I, I was just going to say, you know, I, I have a bit of a problem with this, really based on the location being so close to a residential area. And I guess, you know, last evening I walked up to the park with the with the kids, and the smell of pot coming out of the park was just, 
I mean, and, and the kids were standing there going, what is that? What's going on? And you know, it was a conversation I really didn't want to have with them at that particular time. And yet we were forced into it. And being so close to a residential neighborhood, um, I just think that, you know, I, I feel some sympathy for the neighbors around here for this. And I think it's going to be the smell and, and all of that. And people will be out there, you know, smoking, smoking right out in their neighborhoods. And so I do have a, you know, that's an issue for me. Um, that's the only issue I have is location with it. So. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. So to uh, to Councilor Grant, I know like I guess what really speaks to me with this is like if people are you know, smoking cannabis in the mall parking lot, maybe it's not as offensive to neighbors because it's you know somewhat far from all the the housing. But in this area here, I don't know. Like, is there something the town can do, like build like the smoke shack shelter? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it's happening right now. The cannabis store is not even open, and I'm sure people are going behind Church Street Bakery and like, or not even, or just in the parking lot, like smoking after going to the top house or whatever. So it's already an issue, or it's already something happening, whether it's an issue or not in your mind. So instead of, you know, like, is there something that we can do to mitigate it or to make it more of like, okay, well, if you're gonna do this, maybe go to this like designated smoking area or whatever and we like we own the golf course I'm sure there's like tons of land where people park in parallel like can we build something like a shelter well, I, I, like I'm you know what I mean it's really the town's responsibility well, that's putting <laughs> shelters to smoke pot people living around that one yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. so try to come up with some yeah. way to mitigate yeah okay counselor uh, so I just want to echo on what Councillor McGowan said. There's already going to be a beer and a cannabis store located approximately 20 feet from, from in Coma. Um, so I see this conversation has kind of moved in that respect as far as proximity. Uh, I'm offended by cigarette smoking. And the guys outside of Berwick smoke like chimneys and it drifts into my property. And I live right there and I'm offended by that and there's nothing I can do about it. You know, except write letters to Berwick and ask that they stop. Uh, uh, people are going to, you know, are they going to smoke in a parking lot? Yeah. Are they going to smoke outside? Yeah. Vaping uh, has non-aroma and it's 60% probably of consumed flour. I don't know. might be more than that. Um, you know, I think it's, uh, I just want to speak to the hours. Uh, I think it'd be, uh, you know, somebody said, why do we need two? And so I think in, in a sense of fair competition, uh, you should always have two of everything, grocery stores, shops, clothing stores. You need a sense of fair competition uh, uh, and like even even probably liquor stores where somebody here is carrying one product versus another product. Um, it's, it's a new reality that we're all dealing with is legalization of cannabis. Uh, when I walked down the streets of Vancouver 15 years ago, the smell of cannabis was there. When I walk down the streets of Comox at night, there's there's maybe sometimes the smell of cannabis. And I think the hour should remain the same, and I think the owner will decide at some point there's no point in being open in Comox past 8 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> because there's not a heck of a lot going on. I think right now, uh, you know, the town is changing. I've had multiple people down, and, you know, in the field this weekend at Nautical Days were like, excited about the growth of Comox. Not necessarily talking about the cannabis stores, but they're talking about the excitement back in Comox. The, you know, and when I moved here, that excitement was there. And then it, two pubs burned down, and that was it. The streets rolled up. Well, now we have an opportunity to have excitement again a little bit in our town. And I think it's our job to control that excitement, but to think thoughtfully around how we're going to do this. And I think this submission has ticked all the boxes. And, and, uh, there you go. Thank you. Did you have a question? Yeah, I have a turn on it. So, but I, that wise, which isn't enough, but just walking that neighborhood, the traditional kind of Queens church, Buena Vista, has a very elegant feeling to it. And Church Street Top House is adding a lot of uh, liveliness to it. But to me, I think the business is great, the location is great, but the, I, or sorry, the business is great, the economy is great, and I want to support it, but I just can't get past the location tradition of 
golf course and church and a really unique traditional neighborhood. And so that's where I'm getting stuck on just that the one location. Okay. Any other further comments? Well, well, I think I would just be happier if, if the hours, and, and I hear your point that the other one is open, but I think it is a little different. Um, <clears throat> that the hours would alter to maybe the 8 o'clock closing, just to see. And maybe they'll have to close at 6 o'clock because they don't have business. Yes. Who knows? And I'm not hoping that they don't have business for sure because we need thriving businesses in our community. Um, having said that, I understand the neighbors' concerns and I know parking is a big issue. I would be in favor of having uh, limited uh, time on parking. But of course, enforcement is always a consideration. So um, I think my only comment then would be to limit the hours. Okay. Anything further? So we could um, we could vote on this and then ask that the business uh, licensing, I guess, negotiate with the with the owner of the hours. How would you propose that? You can make the recommendation for alternative hours. You can okay. say that um, at, uh, in uh, a rider to um, recommendation D, so as, an, as a D.3, that the hours be restricted to, and you can set up the hours. And you can make that recommendation. And um, that will be up to the uh, province. Okay. So I've heard, I've heard eight o'clock. I've heard nine o'clock. Do we want to, do we want to make a recommendation for the time, and then we can vote on this, Councilor McKenna? Uh, again, I just want to reiterate, like, our, you know, I, I, I see the utmost respect for that neighborhood for sure, limiting the hours. But what about the neighbors at Berwyn and the neighbors on Balmoral that we didn't limit the hours for the city cannabis store? I just, I just want you to consider that. Why would we limit the hours of a, of a retail business that's zoned already in that location? We should have thought about that when we were zoning or when we were giving city, city cannabis its permission notice. And I, I don't, as a retailer, 25 year history, I, I don't see a difference. Uh, it's a zone, it's a zone property in that portion. So I mean, either vote for or vote against, but I would. Agree. You could put in a dozen to restrict the hours, but I don't think restricting the hours is going to satisfy the owners. I feel like the businesses were given when it was rezoned with the parking lot in the mall and businesses, and the reason it didn't come up there was because as the businesses in the mall were given feedback and that no one was open to pass a certain time. So there is a little bit of a difference as far as like direct impact. I think we got letters there to reporting. It is slightly different. Like park, parking isn't going to finish the time up. So, give me some direction on how you folks would like this to go. Do we want to vote on it hours as is, and perhaps we can come back to it at a at a later date? Is that possible, CAO? Or once we vote on this at the hours of ten o'clock? Once you vote on this, that, that's the that's council direction that will be shown mm -hmm. to the province. Mm -hmm. So right now during the week, the tap house is uh, open till eleven o'clock, I believe. Midnight. Is it? Is it midnight? Yeah. And then on the weekends it's 1 eleven. One a.m. One a.m. Yeah. Um, and then the bakery is open till what time? I think eight till Wednesday, and then nine Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But I'm guessing that was based on like what is the business they're getting right. Like it's just. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They'll get more business. Yeah, they might open till ten. <laughs> okay, so, so I, I think the way to proceed here would be to amend the motion we have if you want to change the hours and not go with the one we've got. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wants to change the hours, they would have to do that now. Yeah, I'm waiting on you folks. I take my direction from you. If, if not, we just vote on the motion. I can say. All right. Well, I don't see any anybody speaking up to that, so we'll vote on the motion as it stands. I shall make all recommended to 9 p.m. 
like approve it and recommend to the province under whatever D, D, the five point three D point three. Um, considering that it's right adjacent to residential properties too. Okay. So do we have any uh, somebody want to second, second that? It. You'll second that. Okay. So comments on the nine o'clock closing. Seeing none. I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference, unfortunately. But mm -hmm. okay. see you on payroll. All right. So that we have uh, nine. We have amendment to nine o'clock. Yeah, so we'll vote on the amendment. All in favor of the amendment for 9 o'clock? Any opposition? I haven't voted yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the mayor. You never vote. Yeah, I, I know, but I saw, I saw 3 and 3. 4 and 2. 4 and 2. 4 and 2. Yeah. Comment. 
Um, if anybody needs a room at the Lion's Den, it's so awesome and inexpensive, and they're so amiable. Uh, I'm glad we're probably going to approve this thing because they're they're an amazing organization that will allow you to rent that space and quite interactive. I emailed them last night. They emailed me this morning, and I booked it for October 19th. So just as an FYI, if you're concerned or anything, you should be. It's a great space, and we do a great thing for the line. Great. So all in favor? Yeah. Carry it. Thank you. Uh, next we have um, the acting uh, deputy corporate administrator appointment. Move. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Carry it. Um, letter of support request for the Northgate Christian Education Society PAC. Move. Second. Questions? All in favor? Carry. And now we go down to the development variance permit application for Port Augusta Street, uh, the uh, signs for the Comox Mall. I move the recommendation. Second. Okay, any questions? Council Bissinger? Yeah, um, I chat with Elliot yesterday. I guess my question was first of all, does the city, city cannabis co signage, does that meet our bylaw or do they have an infraction? Where is that? They meet our bylaw. Okay, and the second question the current Rexall sign, is it at the maximum allowable um, height that it can be or is there allowed like. No, it's not. So they have the maximum yet? Um, the, the words Rexall, which are the bigger words, they are at 18 inches and about 24 inches. Mm -hmm. In contrast, the canvas is allowed at uh, 16 inches. So 25% increase? Uh, so it's, yeah, 18 to 24 inches. Okay. okay. Any further questions? So just to confirm that we will be voting on, like, uh, to, to, to nothing. Okay. So all in favor? Opposed? You opposed? I'm opposed to the recommendation of going larger. Oh, no. no. Okay. Yeah. 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 okay. So, so that, this denial is, is carried then. Okay. Yeah. So they could, they could go yeah. to 24 inches mm -hmm. though, according to the Yeah, they can well, they go, can go they're at 18 inches now, they can go yeah, to 24. Yeah, they should go to the bylaw. Yeah. Is my intent. Yeah. 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 That's, Sorry yeah. for any confusion. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. So, um, now we'll move on to correspondence, which we have a bit. Um, the uh, Remembrance Day uh, from uh, the Legion. Move we'll receipt. Second. And I can't remember the answer. Sure, I see it. And we grant permission. Yeah, as, as in last. I'll say it now. Okay. Um, all in favor? Carried. And um, from uh, Lois Harvey, uh, Harvey requesting uh, road closure for a street party. I'll move that and we grant your request. Okay. okay, questions? All in favor? Carry. And this is from uh, uh, some folks uh, for uh, clamshell plastic used in, used to sell bakery items. So I would move that we receive this and refer it to staff for comment, I guess. Okay. And just on top of that, if we can, or should do I need to second that first? Yeah. Yeah, second that. But for comment, if we could also add it to, I know we said we're going to do like a yearly review of our single plastic ban bylaws, so if we can add that as one of the items mm -hmm. to, yeah. we'll, to look into. Okay. And copy like in conjunction to the staff but comments, please. All right. Okay, so I'll <coughs> And uh, I think for receipt, the uh, Selena Robinson Municipal Move Affairs. Receipt. Okay. Second. And any questions? All in favor? Yes, carried. And um, from uh, Dr. Nielsen, safety concerns on ball model. Oh, yes, one of them. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Marie uh, Prado. Yeah, uh, Marie Prado for uh, requesting a representative on the Comox Valley Regional Food Policy. Okay, so we'll did, did we not do this? I was just going to add. I thought, yeah. I thought well, there it was, was yeah, uh, social yeah. planning, but I don't know that we assigned anybody to uh, the Food Council. I thought we assigned you. Yeah. yeah. I thought so, too. I, I thought yeah. we talked about it, but I wasn't sure if okay. we actually... I'll move receipt that we send council to All right. <laughs> so it's in. Second, second that? No. Okay. All in favor? Okay, that's right. carried. All right. So now the uh, safety concern on Balmoral. Um, I think we should just uh, 
receive that and we'll pass it on to uh, staff. Okay, any questions? All in favor? Oh, Just a quick question. I know we've, yes, re we've referred a few like traffic things to staff. Are we going to get an update as to where they're at? Like, mm -hmm. I know we, have, we talked about signage on Hillside and there's another something somewhere else that we had. Hillside and Mocha. Can we, can we get an update next meeting? Just yeah, they're, they're in the works. I know the one that we had a concern from the stair seniors on right. speed mm -hmm. along the road. Right. Yeah. We just had the traffic counters out uh, for the last month. Okay. So they've, okay. they've now got the data because they wanted to get the data during the busy season right. to be able to provide a uh, verifiable report to council. So they are going to make the And are we letting residents know that we're doing this? Like, yes. Yeah. Okay, um, did we vote in favor of that? All in favor? Carried, thanks. Okay, um, from uh, the Office of the Minister for uh, Child Care BC New Spaces Fund, I think. Move for seat. 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 Any questions? All in favor? That's carried. And um, uh, Solwig and Harold Williams, uh, I believe this one. We should maybe uh, move it to the planning department for their discussion. So I'll, I'll move receipt of this, and I, I think this has been an ongoing issue, and, and I know there's a rationale behind all this, mm -hmm. I can't remember what it is, so mm -hmm. perhaps if we can get a refresher from, from the staff on this, yeah. Mm -hmm. what yeah. the issue is here. Yeah, because I think from when they originally applied to now, it's, it's kind of it's a different era, you know, people are, we're putting more houses in little spots, and maybe, maybe once we get that, we can look at it differently. So, Councilman Bissinger, go ahead. Um, just to add to that, like, if, we're, if we are referring it to staff, like, is there a way, like, I personally think I have no issues with allowing them to rent out their second home, and I'm not sure what the rest of the council, but if you guys are amicable to the idea, like, we recommend to staff with a positive <laughs> well, I, I, I think for, for the sake of the newer counselors, because this has been brought up in the past, and maybe you don't have all the information. See. Well, if, if the applicants are, or if the letter writer is requesting a variance, they, they I think, have been given the opportunity to fill out the application form and apply for a variance. This isn't the process to go for a variance instead right. of writing a letter to counsel. Yeah, yeah. Right? Apply, pay for the application. And let it be processed through the planning department and then come before council. Yeah, yeah. So, so do we want to just move and, and have uh, so we move staff yeah, move for staff? Yeah. Sorry, I have a question. I'm just wondering, rather than referring it to staff, I think it was a well, perhaps a simple matter regarding sewer and so on. And I was wondering if the planner could just quickly comment on that. Put them on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, um, the primary one of the primary things is in that area, um, there is no sanitary sewer. So it has a limited ability um, in terms of development on the properties um, without sanitary sewer. So the idea that people's um, properties aren't frozen because some, some have houses, some don't. So there is a limited amount of development, and coach houses aren't included in that. So coach houses require sanitary sewer. Um, these are bylaw amendments that would have to be um, done, and uh, we have contacted a um, letter writer, and uh, we have provided the applications. So we'll be able to provide an update on that um, at the next council meeting. Okay. So we're just moving receipt at this point. Any further questions? All in favor? Carried. Okay, thank you. Um, now, uh, the Kidney Foundation to waive additional garbage fees. I'll move to see to that. Second. Any questions? Can we like, give it to the staff to try? Is that something that we have the ability to do? Yeah, I don't know how. What would the outcome of that be? Do we send out more stickers to people? Well, we have a third-party garbage collector, so it's not actually us that does it. So I think this may become a little bigger issue than just mm -hmm. to put a sticker on a garbage can. Mm -hmm. Okay. We we'll proceed at this time and um, see how it evolves. All in favor? Carried. Okay, so um, uh, we got 
about uh, the Beaufort Watershed Stewards Groundwater Extraction Resolution at UBCM. We just want to, uh, what do we want to do? Want to move receipts? What is this one? Um, looking, they're looking for us to support this resolution at uh, UBCM. So. Okay, well, I'll move receipts. Yeah. Yeah. Second. And yeah. can we, can we direct stuff or can I put in a notice of motion to try and get this started on our end as well? Um, I think that is the next item yeah, that, you want, okay. that you want to speak to. Jumping ahead. Yeah, you want to be uh, K. You want to get to that one. Okay. So I think at, at this first one here we just move receipts and then those of us who go to UBCM will have the opportunity to hear and, and vote accordingly. So, so all in favor? Yeah, that's carried. So now we have uh, Bruce Gibbons, the Merville Water Guardians, requesting support. Um, this issue again is is in front in front of uh, UBCM, and it will be discussed more next month. Uh, so we'll just see what councils. Uh, Thoughts are on. So I'll, just, I'll move receipt of the letter because we should receive it. Okay. Second. Okay. Any questions? Um, not really questions, but I, I would like to kind of get a motion started because I don't think that we, you know, like with climate, like with any, many things, we don't need to wait for the province to to move to help protect our, our area um, and our natural resources and things. So if, uh, if I can put in a notice of motion to, to get that started, that would be mm -hmm. wonderful. Is that supported? Do we, we yeah, have a notice, notice of motion? motion, motion do we? We, can just, we can just put a motion forward. We can just put a motion forward? Yeah. Well, I, I think but that UBC, uh, UBCM is what, in September? Yes, the and middle, we middle September. we meeting until sometime in September. Um, mm -hmm. We may be able to allow this to go through UBC and see what they have to say. Because I think these kinds of things would be much, have much greater impact on a provincial or federal level rather than us doing one and then somebody else doing one and having 100, and, she said 169, I think there's 189 communities in the province. And these kind of issues come up regularly and, and I believe the worst way that you can govern is by having 189 different ways of doing things instead of one proper way. So, um, I believe that this will probably pass at UBCM, mm -hmm. and perhaps we can get a more grounded view from a, a provincial level rather than everybody doing their own thing. So it might be a good idea to just allow this to do its thing. We're not going to meet until September anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, and with that, uh, with that too, we, um, you know, similar to the bag, a single-use bag bylaw, we. You know, other other municipalities pass it, then there's a, this appeal, so it's all going through. And, and maybe if we, we allowed it to go through the UBCM, and then you get that support, then it would be easier to implement, and we would not be faced with having to uh, rescind something that we've since adopted that maybe falls out of our area of responsibility. You got to remember, if we if we were to put this. Um, bylaw in place that we don't bottle it, it still doesn't change the fact that that he, he can still extract it, he can take it elsewhere. He's just moving the, the commerce part of it out of the town of Comox. But, um, but I think it, it just gives a, a better better package if, if UBCM supports it, then then we, we come back, we address your, your uh, motion and we pass it or not. And then we know that we're not going to get any opposition well, from the cross. Can we hear the so um, um, yeah, yeah, so uh, go ahead, because I think well, you should. Yeah. I'm just going to say, can we hear the notice of motion? And then we can but it would be a motion. It wouldn't be a notice of motion, because okay. we don't need it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. for the motion, so while I agree with you, Councillor Grant, like, uh, I think it's more important to have one voice in this. I think we're laying behind the rest of our, our partners in the community, um, and uh, I agree with Councillor McGowan. I think we should have a motion on the table uh, and protect the citizens of Comox against uh, somebody extracting uh, groundwater for bottling, and I think it's just that simple, um, uh, and uh, I think we're laying behind. 
Council McGowan. Um, my rationale in doing it before the UBC and before the province, you know, takes over or or regulates things. Um, it sends a, a very clear message to the province of something that obviously a lot of people are concerned about. And so if all of these communities are doing it and not just kind of sitting there and, and you know, sitting on their hands and going, okay, well, you take care of the problem, then it, it speaks well to what people actually want and it'll, it'll spur the province on. Because if they don't know that people actually want it, then it's not going to be high priority for them. And there was just a report, I believe, that just came out that was that water extraction. Yeah, so this, this if we were to go with your motion, we're, we're not denying him the right to extract water. He can still, under the provincial uh, laws, he can he can still extract the water until... Not from coal mines. No, no, this is this is extracting water from Merville and bringing it to coal mines. This well, is let's, let's hear your motion, because I don't see if Courtney just went through all the yeah, I, stages I, of it. So I took a page from the city of Courtney and uh, just motion to direct staff to create a bylaw prohibiting the bottling of water except where the source of the water is the municipal water supply supplied to the property on which the bottling is taking place. Okay. I'll second it. If we already have a motion on the table to receive this, so that would all have to come. We'd have to receive the letter then. Mm -hmm. do we call this. All right, so we'll vote on receiving the letter. All in favor? Okay. So now we have your motion on the table. About this, we will second it for discussion. So just and to be clear for Council McKenna, so this is this is preventing any water. It's not just Comox, an aquifer in Comox. It's we're we're now preventing the Murville guy from bringing his business to Comox Correct. to bottle the water. Right. And not necessarily just in plastic containers, but in any kind of container. Correct. And, you know, and just so council knows that, you know, he can go elsewhere to do this. He can still extract the water. Okay. Yeah. 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 But not So we don't feel like we're pawns in this game that we, that we're, we're ganging up, you know, I'm just, I'm, and I just want to throw that out there because... I think there's a motion on the table, and I think we should vote on it. Yeah. I, I, give it, I give it an opportunity more discussion. as well. Yeah. So, all in favor of the motion? Opposed? <coughs> all right. Here we go. Carry. Okay. I'll move to receive the correspondence regarding the groundwater protection. Okay. Second? Second. All right. Okay. And they're all the same, so all in favor? Carried. Thank you. Now I'll move all the non medical cannabis letters at the same time. All right. Second on that? Second. Questions? No. Okay. All in favor? Okay. Great. And, um,. We don't have any late items. Do we, do we have a late item in my file? Is there something? No, just no. the delegations previously. Which you kind of mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So we don't have any late items. Uh, the delegations are complete. Uh, reports from members of council. Well, no, we've got business arising from the public hearings. Yeah, number 12. Which I am call a conflict on for the same reason as before, which is the 1855 Noel Avenue. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we can council 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 council. Council. Number 11? Yeah, that's all. Oh, that's all. Yeah, that's yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Usually that's at the end, though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, let's do it at the end. This makes more sense. We will we will hold off on the, uh, the members' uh, reports. We will. Yes. Well, we, we pass CAO, will you? Two. Two Should have been part of the agenda. Yeah, okay. So we'll go on to number 12, the business arising from the public hearing. And uh, you'll excuse yourself. I'll go this way. So, um, so this one is the rezoning application uh, 1711 at uh, the Comox Rec Center. 
uh, that the Comox zoning amended bylaw 1925 be given third reading. Second. All in favor? Okay, carried. And that the 1925 bylaw be adopted. But we want to adopt it. The second variance is Rob, he doesn't want to call. No, oh, we're on the, the second, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, so all in favor of the adoption? Okay, now we'll bring it to the council again. Yeah, they don't work in this one. Yeah. It's because they're out of practice. Yeah. All right. So, um, the uh, B, this is rezoning application RZ 18-3. Um, BVP 18-3 on Rob Avenue, and that the zoning amendment bylaw 1925 be given third reading. Sorry, sorry, it, that should be 1893. I 18, gave you the new, yes, you did yes. give me that. I gave you the new sheet. Yes. Yeah, all right, yeah, 1893, right, okay. So uh, the Comox zoning amendment bylaw 1893 be given third reading. All of that. Second. Okay, any questions? All in favor? It's carried, and that uh, it uh, um, by law 1911 on Rob Avenue be given third reading. Move that. Space development agreement. Okay. Move. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Any opposed? Okay, carried. All right, so um, we will get back to the. Um, Council uh, updates. So, Councilor McGowan, do you want to go ahead? Sure. <coughs> uh, so, I, um, I, I attended Ice Cream in the Park with Sean uh, Gray. Um, attended the Raising of the Pride Flag. Beautiful day. Um, attended the Inter Integrated Transport Select Committee, and we were able to pass a motion that they for a recommendation for the CDRD. Um, attended a child care action plan meeting, looking into all of that funding that's coming down, which is pretty exciting, and what uh, the child care needs are for the Valley, which are obviously high. Uh, I attended the Comox Valley Community Foundation Gala Ticket Fundraiser at 40 Knots. Um, met with Ron Ray regarding psychoeducational assessments um, and how uh, we are underrepresented in the valley. Um, attended the opening of the Church Street Tap House, Nautical Days Info Booth, uh, Nautical Days Parade, and the Mayor's Lunch. Okay, thank you. Councilor Smith? Thank you. Um, aside from all the uh, Filbert Festival activities and Nautical Day activities, I attended the uh, Child Care Action Committee meeting, and it was really disturbing if you go on st the statistics because uh, there are 15 spaces for every 100 children between the ages of uh, 0 to 3. So that's not very really good. Um, but anyway, uh, we're working on it. Uh, the uh, only other meetings I attended were the regional district meeting and the water committee meeting where we um, assigned the um, contract for creating the water. Uh, treatment plant. And that's my report. Okay, thank you. Well, awesome. well, I spent the weekend on the field uh, for nautical days. Uh, probably emceed, I don't know, 20 some 30 hours. Uh, it was a super day. I had a great time with the parade as well. Thank you to everybody for, for dressing up, and uh, the feedback was strong, and we were fun. Uh, we attended Filbert, and uh, that was really beautiful. I think it was packed over there. It was an unbelievably sunny, beautiful day, so that was great. Uh, attended the um, Community Justice Center budget approval, mm. uh, and there's also a very exciting speaker plan for the Iona Capital Lecture Series, uh, so that'll be exciting next year. I met with a member of the MacLean Heritage Society, had a coffee with Chris Nielsen, um, just continuing discussion with those guys and just uh, really just talking coffee and life. Uh, had a great time at the Mayor's Luncheon, thank you for that, and also at the Pride uh, flag raising, right. and I also had ice cream with Ron Ray, which was pretty pretty fun to do. and. Uh, yeah, it was a really great festival this weekend. I just compliments to the town staff and uh, volunteers that helped put that festival together. Because yeah. it was uh, awesome. Yeah. Okay, Councilor Kissinger. Um, I attended the Pearl Days Squash and Stand Up at 19 Comox. Um, CD Community Foundation took part, so 
They were looking to put 500 new elections in the community this year, which is amazing. And the Crimson and Gold Gala is 19th of October, so I encourage you to buy the tickets if you're not already able to sign up. Um, I helped organize the climate debate round for CDC with uh, Dr. Mataros and Helen Roy. I attended the mayor's lunch, um, volunteered at the Nautical Days in Booth. And that was a great festival, as was Gilbert. I was able to have a wander around. It was awesome. Kudos to everyone. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, I attended the uh, regional district meeting with uh, Councillor Swift, and I guess one thing to note was we had a, uh, Carl Butterworth came from BIU talking about the uh, Seafood Innovation Center, uh, and he's looking for some support for some grant, and, and it's a really interesting project they got. I encourage you to have a look uh, down there, or go down and see them and see what they're trying to do down there, because it, it was pretty good. We saw Diane Hawkins, same speech she gave here. Talked about grants and aid mostly for very area C, where they have a mosquito infestation problem. And uh, similar to one that we had at Kai Bay, um, these are particularly nasty mosquitoes and they breathe in salt water and their bite is not very good. So they're getting money for bat boxes and trying not to look after look after it in that way. But um, you know, we, we were fortunate down in Kai Bay, we were able to contain it pretty quickly, but um, they are nasty little buggers, so <laughs> you don't want them coming in your neighborhood. Um, attended nautical days, was in the parade, uh, spent time at the info booth, and the Bullhead Derby, that took me back some years. It's been a long time since I went there. And I also met with a guy today uh, regarding getting lights on our gateway sign or the highway, so more to come on that. Okay, and Councilor Minion. Yeah, I attended the Child Care Action uh, meeting, which was really interesting about how they're going to get uh, more ECE teachers to take the program, stay in the program, and they're trying to be innovative there. So that was very interesting because our numbers were quite low for people trying to get back into the workforce. Uh, the Pride flag raising here at Town of Comox. I attended the CBC rally that uh, Alex helped, which was nice to just drop into and see the community there. Uh, not all these information booth parade same as everybody else there. I did go out to the CM CMHS Orca little tour, which I'd never done before, and that was really nice, but not part of the council, just with my family. I met with Helen Boyd from the from Australian Nursing Health and group just to figure out what their some of their next initiatives were because they seem quite connected with our health community. So they're working on some future campaigns with getting cigarette butts out of the ocean, a couple other priorities, but She's um, really always nice to talk to and figure out what her community is like. Good. Okay. Thanks. Um I'll just be brief. There's been a, a bunch of change of command ceremonies at the, uh, the wing that I've attended. The most important one is the new wing commander, uh, Colonel Danny Cotona, has uh, taken over. Uh, General um, Mike uh, Atkins is on his way to the UK, so uh, he's put three years in here. Um, I had a sewage meeting, met with a member of the Curtis Road group with Councillor Grant and uh, Swift and talked about some of their issues down there. Um, uh, pride uh, flag raising. I uh, met with uh, MLA Jordan Sturdy at the Chamber office and we talked some transportation uh, things. Um, the uh, Comox Community, the uh, Comox Valley Community Foundation um, jumpstart, I guess they call it, just to, for the Crimson and Gold gal Gallon that's coming up this fall. Um, had a meeting with the Mayor's Golf Tournament and um, like most of you, attended uh, a lot of the um, the uh, events at Nautical Days and Filbert with the great events as well. And uh, kudos to all the organizers for that. And uh, that is all that I have. So we will now get to uh, public questions. So do we have any questions from the public? Yeah. Yeah. Now, we're ready. Ready. now we're ready for you. Yeah. 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 All right, go ahead. I, first, I just want to say what a, what a privilege it was to watch this meeting. It was mm -hmm. a very good meeting, and I'm very impressed with all of them um, and how you uh, you handled us. And uh, also, uh, I do feel that our voice was uh, heard. Mm -hmm. You have a couple of questions, and, and one is a procedural question, one is a, a, a bylaw question, and uh, just a, one small free recommendation. Um, the first recommendation is the yes, uh, the single use plastic span that you're talking about. Uh, make sure styrofoam is mentioned in that mm -hmm. as well. Uh, it seems to be forgotten just by everyone else. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and it's actually worse environmental like that. We just use plastics for whatever reason. It never seems to get on that list. Um, my uh, procedural question, and, and please forgive me, I, I, just, I always thought that when uh, a business license was going to go through or, or, or being considered, that all parties applying needed to be included in the decision, or at least informed of the decision, or that a potential decision was happening. That was my question. No. Mm -hmm. the, if a business license is going to be administered, I, I think because the... Uh, uh, well, Wait, I, maybe we should... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The process is that you come in, you make a business license application, it's referred to uh, various departments and staff, uh, depending on what it is sometimes, various agencies, but again, mostly it's an internal distribution to ensure it's compliant with zoning, there's no outstanding issues in the building department that it's compliant with planning, and that's essentially where it ends. I suppose it would be hard to get anything through if we had to take into account all parties. Um, uh, Councillor McKenna, you bring up a good point. I too do not like to cigarette smoke. It's just one of those, one of my ways. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk to my parents out of smoking when I was 10. Nice. Wish yeah. I had been my dad. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, is there not a, um, a bylaw? Uh, around smoking uh, in terms of the number of feet or meters uh, in, in a public area or even on a private, around private property. And what is that number? Three, three meters? Ten I think feet. it's ten. Ten feet? Ten meters. Ten, ten, ten meters. 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 And we have a municipal bylaw. We don't have a in additional municipal bylaws. We don't know what the province regulates. So, so we accept the provincial bylaws? Correct. And which are what? Um, they're quite detailed, and I can yes, probably yes. get that for you. Yeah. Uh, it, again, they're, they're quite technical and quite detailed. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll go. I, trust me, I, I, I have no problem. I'll do the revision. Oh, no, I, I, can, I can get it for you. Sure. Talk to you you are a wonderful human being. being. <laughs> um, yeah, because it, from, what I, from what I understand, it was a, sort of that, uh, that 10 meter term of public. Uh, and it's just, it's just not enforced. That's the thing. It's, just, it's, just, it's strictly just not enforced. Um, I do believe this one will be enforced. Um, I do believe this one will be enforced. <laughs> um, you guys had some really interesting, like, I love the environmental discussions uh, as well, so uh, uh, kudos to you and thank you. Um, I, I love that. I don't know that you can ban someone from getting water in another place and drum it, I, I, but I like the try um, at, at, at the very least. Um, I will point out, uh, and this is just for the public record, uh, it takes five times more units of energy to produce per square foot of cannabis than it does food. And, and I believe that the discussion was around wheat and, uh, and corn. So it takes five times more energy to produce that crop than food for human beings. So it's somewhat slanted sometimes when we talk about, what, you know, from our environmental viewpoints, where we're coming from. Well, uh, that's my last comment, and I do appreciate I do feel my voice was heard, and I do feel yeah. very much. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. You should be on council. You're like well read, well researched. All right. So, um, did you have anything to say? It wasn't. Well, I don't know if the bar was writing things down, but I was kind of sick, so I'm shy. Will there be extra bylaw and enforcement with the approval of the, the cannabis and all the parking challenges? Bylaws are complaint driven. That's why I think so this will be a This one may be enforced. Okay. Um, so, but, um, Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know your concern. I understand your concern. Mm -hmm. I've, I've visited 20 stores across the country. That's and I've gone inside them. I've stood outside them. Mm -hmm. I've watched. Um, 
the only store. I've seen more than five people in at one time, and most of the time it's one person or two. <coughs> the only time was uh, the opening of the Campbell River BC store that opened last week, and it was packed. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I know your concern, but I think as you see the business play out, it may your concerns may be alleviated. Maybe not. Actually, we'll, we'll get to know so, yeah. My, my it, it is it's just sort of, it's not the last straw, but it's definitely the icing on the cake that's already been building up in terms of parking and noise and smell. Um, because people do use that dark alley as uh, a potty place. Um, they use it for smoking weed and non weed. Um, with just even the puppet or the tap house, we're allowed to call it a pup because it'll burn down. The tap house. No, no, I didn't saw the video. Um, yeah. <laughs> but even when it was under construction, and even now, I mean, it was worse before when the bakery was open. I mean, shorter hours in terms of people doing dirty deeds in the back. I've got to tell you an interesting stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, and there, there is not four spots back there. There's barely even two because they just have so much. Yeah, they have to clean up a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, think, I think, yeah, we're, we're, we're getting yeah. off. That's right. yeah. so we, I think that we stray yeah. out of our, our yeah. territory right. here. The idea of, of the public asking us to ask questions that are of a technical nature okay. or for some sure. some clarity on something that's happened. It's not to engage with the, with the okay. councillors. I've been here enough to know yeah. that this can go sideways really fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so okay. I would Any encourage that the questions, questions go through sure. the mayor and that they be Thanks, either Council. clarity or of a technical nature of something sure. that we've done. Yeah. Yeah. One last question. Is, is just just a, oh, sorry. Do you have a question? You, you are all aware of the um, uh, legalities around the uh, uh, legalized cannabis the store in terms of what they may or may not do. One of the things that uh, I do believe that they cannot do is have a sale or advertise um, uh, in any way, shape, or form. So your, the, the comment about the competition seems to fall unusual because I, I don't know that there can be competition between uh, cannabis so stores. But, uh, no, no. I think we're, we're, again, we're going down that That's road. That's my question. Yeah. Yeah. Just eat competition? Yeah, yeah. Brand, brand choices. That's all. If it's, you know, uh, Okanagan wine versus uh, California wine. Mm -hmm. So there's different varieties. Okay. That's all. Actually, we've okay. kept you long enough as far as Yeah, thank you. Are, are you all getting that now? Well, I don't like when I live with him on the corner of the church. Yeah. Place, so, um, it actually brought my attention when the woman was talking about safe transportation. Is there, um, like how do we, uh, I, I guess writing a letter, but we had um, someone measuring the traffic on Buena Vista because mm -hmm. of complaints that were going on, and we never heard back, and I have checked in with the nice people downstairs mm -hmm. there, um, and, and uh, nothing ever came of it. And there's one on Church Street now as well because of complaints. So it's just sort of an annual thing when I pay my taxes, I start talking about mm -hmm. that stuff. How do we find out what's going on with that? Oh, good. Yeah. The, uh, the engineer has been on vacation for the last three weeks, so that's probably why yeah. uh, there's not much information coming out. So mm -hmm. upon her return next week, I would anticipate some of these uh, traffic-related issues will be reported out on. Yeah. And I would, I would encourage you to contact the Public Works Department and speak with Shelley Ashfield and ask that question. Okay, Shelley Ashfield. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, I mean, it is actually deemed a safe that the, the school district puts out a brochure at the beginning of the year that Buena Vista and church are safe routes. And I know being a parent and also on the pack at Rob Road, that a lot of people are, a lot, a lot of kids and parents are riding their bikes on the sidewalk on church because it's not safe to ride your bike on church and they won't even go on one of those because they know it's a freeway. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, if you no contact, yeah, no. Okay, thank you very much. And, sir, back there. Good evening, <coughs> Mayor and Council of Colmox. My name is James Cunningham and I'm here to see to speak to you. Do you, you have a question for us? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. I have a question for 
you and it's in relation to your bylaw and I could have the Alberta. And um, it's in relation to your uh, your busking bylaw, your street entertainment bylaw. And I want you to know that I was here 15 years ago when the bylaw was given first, second, third reading and adopted right here in these chambers. And um, I had the pleasure this afternoon of, of doing an audition for Twyla, right here in this chair, and another member of your staff. And things went very well, and I appreciate it. And um, I was hoping that things were going to go okay until the end of the audition, when Twyla mentioned to me that one thing that's going to be written into my rules and regulations that I will not be able to play with my son John, who also has the license here. Now, my question to you, have you changed this particular bylaw, made an amendment to this bylaw, which says no freedom of association with your family member, even though I have another license? Or did I miss something? The, the, the purpose the purpose of the question period first and foremost is questions related to items on the agenda okay um, now to, to try and answer mr. Cunningham's question he has applied for a permit staff are following the bylaw mm -hmm. and there are no conditions that will be put in place that are not relevant to the bylaw at which time once mr. Cunningham has received that he can either submit something in writing to council mm -hmm. or deal with staff directly. Okay. All right. And Twyla? Could I just add further that there is a piece in the permit uh, that speaks to no two buskers busking in close proximity to each other. Oh, okay. That's why it's not it's not in the bylaw. It's attached as a condition of I'll show you the hard I actually read the bylaws. Oh, yeah. yeah. So but we're not we're not here to debate. The we're, we're just no, I understand. The thing is, I, I know the bylaw. I was here when it was when it was okay. read, when it was put into place. Nowhere in that bylaw does it say you're not allowed to perform with another bus who has a license in the same town. Mm -hmm. I got legal advice from Calgary this afternoon and that's why I'm here tonight. Yeah. I want you to so, my so, you know, maybe, maybe what I could ask of you is, uh, just like we had many tonight delegations, if you were to uh, prepare a delegation, uh, come, come speak to us and uh, give all of council the opportunity to uh, to ask those questions of you. So, if you would yeah. like to Absolutely. pop, in, no, pop no, into town hall, the big problem is I live in Calgary. I don't get here. I, maybe every three months, I won't allow license to have on a bus down right. in the marina. Yeah. And it's complicated. This whole bylaw is complicated. It was 15 years ago, and it is now. Mm -hmm. It needs to be reviewed. So, yeah. Opinion. If you bring if that up I, as your if delegation. I here and Johnny bus down there, we're not breaking the bylaw. I mean, common sense. Yeah. Please. So, yeah. So, thank you. We, we will take that under advisement, mm -hmm. and um, you know, we'll work through the bylaws. But yeah, I. I invite you to to come as a delegation and, uh, and speak to us. So when we're so, so it's just one question. Then I go home. I go back to Calgary. Mm -hmm. Are you going to stop me from performing with myself? Well, I think we've already heard that the uh, the bylaw states that no two buskers are allowed at the same time. You know what? I think. I think. I think we need to just. Uh, Kind of move this to a delegation. You come back to us, and uh, yeah, I think it's probably best that we get to talk to the Lord. I'm, I'm more than happy to clarify. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so no, we're not for red bag anybody. I think you're missing. I got I got three other boys that do the same as him, and they play accordion, and I come here for a license. I think you're okay. misunderstanding, if I may. There's nothing that prevents what you were saying to me was that you guys wanted to be side by side playing accordion. Nothing prevents your son from being in the area that's defined where he can go play, mm -hmm. and you could be down at the marina. Yeah. What well, can it, happen yeah. is if the two of you are side by side playing together. That's, that's what it's. That's like. denying the right to freedom of association with my family. I'm sorry, you can't do that. It's, it's the meeting. It wouldn't just be with your family, it would be with the guitar player. It would be well, with the guitar player. And if it's with the guitar player or with anybody else, it still is allowed. Okay, 
So I'm just going to call a point of order here, and that we. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Thank you very much for your uh, for your time. And uh, here. I just want you to know I won't be taking legal action. I'm not going to. Yeah. Well, I'm you're not, like I want my license toilet right like here, but not with those kind of restrictions where I can't play with my son who's been my partner for 30 years. I'm sorry, and I will take legal action. Okay. Right. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Thanks for coming and spending uh, such time yeah, waiting for Thanks for listening to you Okay. All right. So I think uh, we are losing all the places here. So we've done that. I think uh, we don't have any media here. So um, we will uh, move into the uh, um, public, uh, or to the public. Uh, yeah, excluding the public, and we're going to go into it in camera. All right. Yes, you may go. We've got to wait for the camera. Yeah.